And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Space Fam. It's great to see everybody tonight. We can't wait to have these amazing conversations we're going to have with you. With the incredible guests that we have on, we are talking about patches, space patches, the art, the design, everything that goes into them, how people are inspired. So uh, I'm going to go first to the only person I knew on this panel tonight before we started this, and that is Tim. Tim, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into this, and uh, your love for patches and what you do. Hey, Ron, thanks for having me. Uh, I started out very informally. Uh, I was a teenager, and one Saturday morning, I walked into the store, and I purchased this magazine, uh, Analog Magazine, and it had an article by Frank Kelly Fries, who uh, uh, detailed the story of how he came to create the first Skylab crew patch. And uh, it was like getting a set of blueprints. Uh, I had already decided... Uh, Soon before that, or recently before that, uh, when my dad and I went to the launch of Apollo 17, that designing mission patches uh, like uh, Robert McCall did for Apollo 17 was how I could cooperate and, and, and participate. And uh, because I'm a very left brain kind of guy, you don't want me calculating trajectories because you will be lost in space. But uh, patches is something I knew I could do. Uh, so I started writing to Cruise back in 1973, and uh, the first patch I designed uh, was for a potential Skylab rescue mission. Uh, the second Skylab crew uh, developed a RCS thruster leak, and NASA was discussing uh, sending Vance Brand and uh, Don Lind up to uh, rescue those guys if their spacecraft was disabled. And so I sent this design to Vance Brand in 1973, and uh, they developed a workaround so that uh, the, the rescue mission wasn't necessary. Uh, but I, I met Vance Brand a few years ago at Space Fest, and I said, sir, you don't have any reason to uh, remember this. But in 1973, I sent you a couple of designs for the Skylab rescue mission. And his wife spoke up and said, I know exactly where those designs are. Turns out he had saved them in storage for 44 years, and he mailed them back to me. Wow, man, that's a pretty incredible story. So that's kind of how you got started, and what are you doing with it now? I mean, where can people find you? Obviously, you do stuff. You've created a patch for me and my friends for the Student Astronaut Contest we did a couple years ago. So this all led to some pretty cool stuff, and you've been at it for a while now. <laughs> yes, well, that's one of the benefits of being a gray beard. Um, <laughs> I do have a website. It's, uh, it's being reworked, uh, but it's still out there, uh, www.kscartist.com. Dot com, and uh, I do uh, mission patches for clients, uh, for commercial entities, uh, analog astronauts. Uh, uh, very proud that uh, when Sion Proctor did her video for the Inspiration4 flight, she was wearing a patch that I designed. And uh, so I'm inspired by these young professionals every day. You know, people ask me, where do you get your inspiration? How do you create this uh, volume of work? Hi, Sarah. And, um, and I said, because <laughs> I'm constantly surrounded by very impressive, very inspiring people. And so inspiration is the easiest part uh, of what I do. Love it. And actually, it's kind of funny. One of the reasons I was a little late was... Uh... She had just called me before that because we're we have something coming up. We're going to be announcing it tomorrow. We're going to be having a conversation on Twitter on Spaces. So uh, if you're listening in, you're getting in a little bit early because I want to announce it in the morning. But Cyan and I are going to be talking about all the cool stuff that's going on, including an event that we're working on together. So I uh, really can't wait to, to, to launch that with everybody tomorrow. But let's go to our next guest, Morgan. Morgan, please tell us all about you, uh, the awesome stuff that you do, how you got into design, and uh, what you're up to these days. All right. Well, I haven't been at this quite nearly as long as Tim has. Obviously, I have no gray beard, but uh, <laughs> um, I, really, I fell backwards into the world of space and space design. Uh, I got a degree in graphic design. 
um, from a small school in upstate New York, graduated, packed up my car and moved to Florida, applied to jobs, applied to jobs, applied to jobs. And the first one I happened to get was at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Uh, when I first started there, I didn't know the difference between a space shuttle and a rocket. And now I could tell you the difference between you know, the difference between different Atlas V fairings and why they're named that way in the different configurations. So I've come a long way in just the last four years, actually. So uh, I went from working at the visitor complex as the graphic designer there doing pretty much everything you can think of a graphic designer does. Uh, worked for three years, then the pandemic hit. And, you know, we all know that pandemics are not so great for visitor centers. So I lost my job there, sadly, but it led me to do some pretty awesome projects. I designed my first patch. It was kind of just a poking fun at uh, the Scrubtober because it was just everything scrubbed here in October. So I made a patch poking fun at it. And then from that, I just kind of got a couple of clients like the launch company. I've done a few patches for them. And then I had the pleasure of working with Rocket Lab and did their patch for their very first recovery mission. The, no. the, the stamp, the return to sender one, uh, where it looked like a stamp on the fairing. So yeah, so I've been working with uh, some cool clients since then. And I just recently started a job as a graphic designer at NASA headquarters. And luckily they let me stay in Florida so I don't have to move to DC. I can stay where all the pretty rockets are. <laughs> nice. But, so I'm working with uh, NASA now in the Office of Public Engagement and uh, with digital team doing social media graphics and exhibits. That is fantastic. I'm jealous. I'm actually going to be at Kennedy Space Center uh, here in a few months, another event that I'm doing. I'll be telling details about that later this week on another conversation I'll be having on Twitter Spaces. <laughs> just happened to come up, I swear. Like, it's not like I talked to Tim about this the other day. I said, man, it's just been a crazy week. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lots happened this week. It's been really cool. So hopefully we get to all catch up and uh, we can talk shop uh, while I'm down there. Maybe grab some lunch. And I mean, it's the Apollo 14 event. So I'll just go ahead and let you know I'll be involved in that in some way. And uh, so I, I figure we might see a few familiar faces there. So next, let's go to Mark. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into this. You've got a pretty cool history. I was reading in your email, as everybody does already. You know, Morgan's you know by far the youngest, and hers is still awesome. So I love the group tonight. It's just there's a lot of a lot of background, a lot of passion, a lot of love for this industry. So Mark, tell us all about you. Okay, uh, first of all, bringing up to date uh, right now, I'm a retired NASA research pilot and space operations engineer. And how did I get here? Well, uh, as a kid, I was inspired by, uh, I grew up during the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo era, and I was just completely enthralled with that. And uh, and as a little kid, I loved to color and draw, and I eventually took up my mom's paints. And so in parallel to all my interest in that, uh, I was always drawing and coloring, and I was called upon uh, by the schools to design the logos for uh, different brochures and events and things like that. So uh, I geared more at my education and career to enter the Air Force, become a pilot, worked space shuttle program, went to NASA, became a uh, ops engineer in the astronaut office, and, uh, and eventually uh, flew for NASA as a research pilot. But along the way, was creating art all along the way, and, and the word got out, I'm a patch designer, and uh, the results were designing nine space shuttle mission patches and a lot, a lot more patches uh, for the Air Force. My different units. And uh, I actually have a short slideshow whenever we get around to sharing screens, I'll, I'll kind of go through more detail, but just inspired by 2001 Space Odyssey and Robert McCall, great, one of the greatest space artists with murals at the Smithsonian, but he also designed mission patches during Apollo and shuttle era. And he became a mentor of mine. So just an honor to be caught up in all that and, uh, and be a participant actually in the uh, aerospace program. Very, very cool, sir. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, last, we're going to get to Blake. We may actually have one other guest that's going to join us. They're having a bit of some difficulties, so we'll have, we'll have them uh, here in a little bit, and we'll do their intros if they are able to join. Blake, tell us all about the awesome work you do, how you got into design, and all that fun stuff. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate you having me on this evening. Um, my name is Blake Dimasnell. Um, I'm here in Houston, Texas, and I work on the uh, engineering and science contract at uh, Johnson Space Center doing marketing and, um, you know, PR work for specifically the engineering and science directorates. And um, yeah, I, um, I've i been around NASA and the aerospace industry my entire life. I 
Um, we moved here to Houston when I was two years old and my mother started working out at JSC uh, at that time. And uh, so, you know, she would be, you know, working in different programs, uh, originally shuttle and then over into the phase one shuttle mirror program and then into ISS um, and would, you know, bring home patches for a lot of these flights. And, you know, I would see them and think, man, that's, that's really cool. Somebody's got a really cool job getting to do this stuff um, at work every day. And um, I always wondered who got to do that. I figured it was somebody here in Houston for the most part, but didn't really know that, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, the astronauts can, can really go to anybody they would like to, to design these, uh, these things. So um, anyways, I never really thought I'd work in aerospace. Um, I uh, didn't have a background in engineering or science or, or math or anything like that. Um, and actually got a bachelor's of fine arts and cinematography and graphic design and then uh, followed that up with a, a master's in digital media applications. Um, but was very fortunate enough to been out at JSC in 2007 and have been doing so since. Um, I, I finally got an opportunity to design uh, my very first expedition patch, uh, which was Expedition 36, uh, because of a friendship I had with uh, astronaut Chris Cassidy. He actually was a friend of our families in this area. and. Um, gave me the opportunity to take a stab at a design, gave me complete free reign over uh, trying something different. And um, it was just a, a wonderful challenge and a wonderful opportunity that kind of kicked it all off. Um, prior to that, uh, I had did in a, an internal competition that both Tim and I participated in um, that NASA held in 2010 uh, to design the final uh, patch for the space shuttle program as a sort of bookend, um, you know, commemorative design. Uh, and we were both very fortunate to be out of about a hundred designs, be narrowed down to the top 15 and then to the top three. And, um, and so I was quite honored that they selected my design to, to represent the end of the program at that time. And, um, so that kind of kicked off, you know, being able to talk to the crews and, start working on working on designs from there. After I did the Expedition 36 design, um, you know, Chris started talking to some of the other guys in the offices over there and um, they wanted me to take a stab at, at some of their designs. So anyways, I uh, went on to do um, Expeditions 36, 38, uh, 41, 45, 58, uh, 63, and um, still working on some. So it's, it's been great. It's been a wonderful experience. And uh, for somebody that never thought that they would work in aerospace, you know, I, I can't express how, how grateful I am for all the opportunities. And, you know, it's, it's been wonderful so far. Beautifully said. I think uh, a lot of people here are stoked to be in the industry. You know, maybe, didn't have a, uh, maybe didn't have the plans to do it, but, you know, we, we ended up th uh, there somehow. And uh, perfect timing for us. You are the last guest that we're going to go to tonight, so we're going to get your introduction. Tell us all about what you do, how you got into design, and uh, you know anything else you want to share with us to start. Well, for starters, I'm very lucky to make this whole entry today with all of you guys here because I just literally landed uh, less than half an hour ago, and my wife luckily got through the pickup line at Hobby Airport. So not to go into that kind of a disaster... I uh, I can tell you this much. Right now, I'm retired, and I, I never thought I would be busier than hell, but I am. <laughs> uh, I have a number of things going. Uh, unfortunately, nothing for a patch. If I would only say that, uh, believe it or not, I'm um, collaborating, uh, helping my son, who is a captain in the U.S. Space Force, as of February 4th. Nice. Um, that's an epic in its own because uh, he actually did an expedition patch for the, the crew patch for uh, uh, Expedition 13. Um, now, um, speaking of what I did and how I got into this, um, right now I managed to open up my desktop and I have my service module patch and my expedition to uh, collaborative efforts. Um, the guy that got me into this is to my right, and that's Mark Pestana. 
Um, funny enough, Mark was over uh, at the time working with the crew and uh, both of us had certain dreams, not unlike any one of you. Um, some dreams are not meant to happen. So for what's it worth, we created something else. Uh, but the story about service module patch, um, which was a uh, locomotive for the FGB and Unity, the very first two elements, we were uh, all working um, with the LPM, uh, Gordon Ducori. Uh, there couldn't be any nicer guy. He was major in the Air Force and uh, ended up at NASA. And he was... Uh, quite instrumental in um, making all these memorable things. He was very much into the stamps and the envelopes and all these kind of things. I frankly was a little bit too far from this, but then again, duty calls and uh, Russians approached him with quite unremarkable uh, patch. And that patch uh, was turned into a pin Russians are quite powerful with the pin uh, making. Anybody who ever gone to Russia and Moscow and uh, had seen a million of those little medallions. But uh, what they did didn't suffice to say uh, was unremarkable. Uh, Gordon didn't like it. And he seen me doodling and he said, go do it. I said, that's nothing simpler because I... I presented it and I don't know how to make it happen in here. Um, is there a way to attach something and you could see? Um, sure, yeah, you can uh, You can actually, at the bottom of your screen, you have one that says share and then you just click share screen and whenever you click share screen, it will give you an option for an application window. Um, that's so you'll see your entire screen, then application window, you click application window and if there's a picture that you wanna show, you can show it there. Uh, let's see, uh, or you can email it to me and I can, I can perfect. Share. I will, I will email it to you. Uh, okay. but long, long story short, the, the module service module is called Zvezda, which is Russian for star. And, uh, at the time, all the patches and everything else was either square or rectangular. NASA had its own expectations and I was the first one to demand from them permission to give me little sharp edges for the stars uh, tips. Uh, I don't know if I succeeded, but I certainly converted them a little bit and they gave me a little break. Uh, when I presented that uh, patch to Russians, they were head over heels happy and they actually considered this a very collaborative effort. Um, Frank Culbertson, who at the time was a technical director for the for the entire initial station, um, was very complimentary uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, and um, it just so happened that both of us were rollerblading at the time. And uh, he, plain and simple, said, you have any ideas for my patch? I said, you wrote the book. You, you know, he says, oh, what a grand idea. Go ahead and do it. I didn't know that I mumbled something that will eventually going to be a, a book with turning page on station mirror and opening up the station, uh, international station, uh, space station with white pages. And those white pages became populated later on, on the ULF-4 when... Uh, last of the partners delivered their uh, elements. So that was it. But I mentioned uh, Mark Pestana, uh, who I considered at the time my artistic director. <laughs> I, think, I think he just gave you a salute there. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody saw that because yeah. I saw it in the background there. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was my, I, I, I called him personally. I said that he was my artistic director because uh, with the ease of a painter, he would just tell me, this will not fly, this will not fly. And I kind of like this expression because it was not in my vocabulary. So when someone says, okay, this will fly, 
I literally took this as an it will fly in space, not necessarily things don't fly, you know, th that kind of expression. So uh, I got very much encouraged by those two guys. And, and believe it or not, this is how things uh, work out. I was working on that patch uh, for Frank and for uh, uh, two Russians. And they pretty much put me through the grill. This will not fly. This will not fly. And eventually this Expedition 3 became a darling. And actually, I was very pleased. It was uh, defeating everything that we all work for, uh, ideologically speaking, uh, personally speaking, as friends. Uh, we develop relationships that, uh, that are based on... Uh, being humble at one on one end and also understanding that what we do will stay uh, in history and so uh, between ambition and uh, humility there is a span uh, from the you know from the ground to the stars but uh, with that encouragement from mark um i had to deliver my patch to none other than Mike Fink, who was uh, helping um, Colbertson, uh, you know, with whatever tasks these guys do. And I started hanging out up on the fourth floor, um, I mean, on the sixth floor, where the crew was. Half of the crew were my neighbors. I happened to be sitting, my background is the wall that probably got knocked down by a, a couple good heroes. One of them was uh, T.K. Mattingly, who owned this house. Imagine that this Russian guy comes over reluctantly moving from Seattle. I still adore Seattle. Um, every time I go there, I, I manage to squeeze myself uh, into Flight Museum there. Uh, this time was a very short lunch, but anyway, with my ex-boss who kept my job for a number of years only then to move to London. I was part of a field service and my uh, eclectic skills, particularly in doodling, um, I, I say this with pride that when I started on landing gear, uh, mechanical hydraulic system on 777, it was a white vellum paint. Uh, now you're flying it. So it's kind of a funny thing when you walk into new uh, 737 MAX that I just flew and you say, darn it, that's my toilet or laboratory's <laughs> light. You, you just, you just, you know, you just say, wow, that's, that's interesting. Something stays on the paper and something stays in the airplane. So between airplanes and space, I got completely sucked into this. And Mike Fink uh, invited me to meet his crewmate, uh, Gennady Padalka. And uh, lo and behold, we become lifetime friends. Um, our children are friends. We are friends. And uh, like uh, Mr. Dumasnil mentioned, I got lucky to get couple phone calls from space and sometimes i get the phone call in the in a bathtub it's just <laughs> you know here i am in a, in a in a hot tub trying to cure my old bones and uh my i didn't know that we were getting the hot tub stories tonight i'm not gonna lie i didn't know we we're doing hot right, tub stories I wasn't tonight. Get... This early. listen it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's almost a god <laughs> almost a god truth and i don't want to make it too long because i actually feel uh very passionate about what we did and i was always in love with mark's works all of them not just in patches but uh, paintings and everything else so it's kind <laughs> of a and not to mention of course uh, pat, pat yourself on the shoulder for on my behalf but the same goes for team Gagnon. and i will tell you only this much uh, there's a one person that is not here um and i i would have done everything to have him here uh, Terry Johnson, who designed the patch for Columbia. And Terry is a one of those people. Um, of course, you understand more than anybody else that you need good right tools. 
And everything that I did was done on the tools either NASA or Boeing allowed me to use for that purpose. Whether it was a service module or expedition tool uh, for uh, giving them an idea or uh, when someone else will start speaking, I'm going to go and fish out what I promised to Tim, the hand sketch by none other than Bill Shepard. The damn thing belongs in the museum because it is exactly the very first thing that will become uh, a, a patch for first expedition. And um, it was my conversation with the guy standing in the elevator sometimes or on the, uh, you know, uh, on the flight of stairs and saying, okay, what do we do? Do we make it complicated or do we make something symbolic and something simple? And you struggle always because you want to put not just the mission purpose, but the details, what's significant, what is, uh, what makes that particular mission, what makes that particular crew uh, so special that you want to put names on it. And what happens if you take the names out? What, uh, what happens to the patch if the names are not on it? My always desire is to create something that will spark interest beyond just the name. Okay. Uh, yes, I see it. I see it. Yes. Yes. The patch stays. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is exactly the, the, the line that uh, when I put the patches, whether it was for Mike or for Gennady or for uh, Culbertson, uh the next thing that they do once they see the patch completed they say okay now remove everything and leave me just a patch with no name with no nothing is just make it very simple it'll be a patch for the polo shirt and imagine this you you get this patch you are a guest at the lunch um you come to receive your lunch credentials uh, you walk into that wonderful office at kennedy and they tell you, wait a second, wait a second, there's something for you. And they come out with the uh, laundromat box. Uh, you know, sometimes in a, in a better laundromat, they still give you your stuff in a box. Okay. Um, so they come out and there is your polo with your name. It says Boris and it's, you know, Expedition 3. Um, you know, you put it on, and everyone thinks that you're an astronaut. Even you think, that, even so you Boris, think you're I, not. I, Boris, I hate to interrupt, but we were just doing intros, I, <laughs> and I want to make sure that we get some questions. <laughs> I know I you're excited, I, and I'm happy to hear. It. <laughs> well, no, I we give up. want to hear more. Listen, I just guys. Make sure oh, that we... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say one thing. Uh, number one. Sure. My admiration to all of you, one, for dedication, two, for understanding the significance, because I always say, connect the dots. I always say, see what's behind, open your eyes, because once you see what's in it, once you understand the symbology that will stay, that symbology carries not just a meaning for you, not just a meaning for, oh my gosh, I created something. On the contrary, you are carrying someone else's mission you're carrying someone else's goal in life if you will and you're giving them the best gift possible and i had the best gift possible delivered day before uh ilan ramon and columbia crew were taking off for the quarantine and when i finally delivered this thing the guy put this on his heart and said now i can go to space in peace. I have something I can give to others. That knocked the socks out of me. I stood in there with the tears <laughs> in my eyes and when I remember this to this day, I still think of that, that, that moment, that graphic moment when he takes something that you created from a napkin and that that's a story in itself. Only Mark can tell it in a better English. But when the guy takes your work, puts it on the heart right here and said, this will fly with me. I have now something to give to others. Then you begin to grasp that you've done your job. So for Blake, I take my head off anytime. 
you uh, <laughs> you must have a patience of Jesus because uh, <laughs> I, I, look, uh, I, I will not. I, I I had guys getting upset at me because oh man, this is a twenty first version for God's sake. How many versions can you have? Why can't you just make one and be done with it? I said. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. No. Ask any jeweler. He'll stretch the ring and it'll flop on your finger. Or if it's a good thing, it'll stay forever and you will never want to take it off. So, usually uh, I usually I have the opposite problem. Usually I provide one option and then I tell them, guys, we're on the 20th version of this. I think we need to kind of wrap this up, you know? <laughs> so. Tim, I, how about you? I, like, what's, what's kind of your process with that? I had, uh, I had uh, only one, I, you know, it's a, it's a very sad thing for me personally, because when I did work for uh, Pierce Boris, Sellers. Boris, I was talking to Tim. Boris, I was, I was asking Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, what's your process? <laughs> uh, it's it's a lot like what, what everybody else is describing. You know, I, I try to do some research on the mission that I understand what their goals are. And so I'll develop some rough sketches and I'll submit those and they'll respond. You know, I like this. I don't like that. Let's try this. And, uh, and eventually we get through the process. But, uh, you know, you try, you have a, basically a four by four inch canvas to illustrate something that's going to uh, stay with that mission forever. You know, the, the coolest thing for a guy like me is... Uh, you know, my great great grandchildren one day could uh, search online uh, for uh, Expedition Eleven, and they'll see something that I created. They won't even know me, <clears throat> excuse me, but they'll see something that that lives on past me, and and I'm sure the uh, everybody else uh, understands that as well. That you know, the artwork we create for these missions is the iconic symbol for that mission that's it's going to be on the wikipedia page it's going to be on the nasa sites and uh, that artwork will stay with that mission after all of us are gone amazing mark let's talk a little bit about kind of like the process you know how you do your work and you know how you put these pieces together whenever you're working on you know something that is going to be with somebody you know, forever really yeah, so um, I had the luxury, of course, of, of being an engineer, support engineer in the astronaut office uh, during the 1990s. Uh, from 90 to 98, I worked there in the development of the space station. And um, so the, the luxury was I could hang, uh, like I've got here some of my artwork hanging in my office. And um, uh, I wasn't well known at the time. Uh, when I first got there, nobody really knew me. I was another support engineer, but over time you would develop relationships. But it was uh, an eye opener, of course, to have uh, some of the astronauts walk into my office to ask some technical question about space station and stop and 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 look at, you know, this artwork. And one of the best compliments from, from the late, great uh, G. David Lowe, uh, I was sitting at my desk and he I didn't know he had come in, he was behind me. and. And, uh, but I could feel there was a presence there. I heard somebody there and I shared an office with other engineers. So then the first thing I heard was, it's great to know that some people around here use both sides of their brain. And I turned and, you know, what a compliment coming from an astronaut who's, and then he started asking me more about it. And the word kind of spread, uh, you know, people got to know me in, in my art and then, um, Something came up, uh, the flight crew operations directorate at that time, which included the astronaut office and Ellington Airfield uh, aircraft operations where the astronauts flew T-38s, fly T-38s. Um, they wanted a new organizational patch. And uh, so I entered the contest and ended up winning the contest. And I have uh, one of the patches right here. Um, and basically it was to capture it was to capture uh, various elements in the history and the management of the flight crew operations directorate, as opposed to the mission operations directorate, which at that time was Gene Kranz Empire, mission control and all the simulators and training group. And it was fantastic to be considered equal to that patch when this was uh, 
uh, you know, selected. And so it represents the space shuttle program at the time. And uh, T-38 was the uh, Flight Crew Operations Directorate. The astronaut office, of course, is represented by the shooting star symbol and uh, astronaut uh, EVA there. We also had the, the future developmental offices of uh, Lunar Mars and the International Space Station. So you see those symbols. And the Eagle was the safety office. So when that happened, the, the request started coming in. And the process was generally, hey, Mark, come to our, uh, come down to my office, the co crew commander. A new crew is selected. Crew commander uh, and the crew, of course, are busy learning about their mission and, and, and their training schedules being set up. But the commander assigns additional duties, such as public affairs, uh, developing uh, invitation lists to family and friends for going to the launch, things like that. Usually it's the rookie of the crew or the low time crew member that gets the additional duty of uh, you're in charge of getting a patch. And, uh, and it's run the full gamut of the entire crews involved to maybe just one or two. Um, some crew members, I'm not gonna name names, some crew members say, I don't care. And others are so adamant about certain colors. And it's just a fantastic process to go through that. The, the commander sort of sets the tone. They may uh, say, uh, I have stories of some saying, I absolutely do not want this on the patch, or I absolutely want this on the patch. And, uh, and Man, it uh, sounds like the life of a wedding DJ. I used to do weddings. And I used to get stuff like that all the time. I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, you can't play this kind of music. Don't play any country. Don't play any rock and roll. Don't play any hip hop. What do you want to play? <laughs> 70s funk? Totally been there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm for one, I learned, uh, well, when, if I get to my slides, eventually when we share screens, I'll talk about my relationship with Robert McCall and uh you know getting some mentorship from him and, and the kind of the going in strategy i have tim and i have talked about this is simplicity is best when a when a little uh you know three inch diameter starts getting crowded you want to step back and say wait a minute you know this this thing is uh it's going to get real busy and uh, you want to deal with symbology symbols rather than actual hardware but some patches, I mean, they, they contain the entire contents of the shuttle payload bay out in space as if everything's getting deployed at once, you know, and the arms out and, you know, all these modules are flying and, and uh, uh, now don't go looking at my patches and try to figure out. <laughs> oh, but, now uh, we're going to be looking for stuff. Now we're going to go all like, uh, what's his name? Oh, Robert Langdon on it. Like everybody's talking about symbology and this stuff. And all I can yeah. think in my head, because I love those books, is that in like three or 400 years in the future, people are going to look back at this and they're going to break this down. And this is, you know, th these were the things that art that designed the first, like the beginning of us going to space when we're, you know, on Mars and who knows where yeah. else we're going to be in hundreds of years, right? They're going to look back at all these pieces and how you designed them and what all was put into this little area. We've seen so many different types of art like that before. So someday there'll be a Robert Langdon in book number 1046 of the uh, that series. And he'll be like, cloned himself 10 times and in space and he'll be looking at all the amazing <laughs> stuff that everybody here is creating. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was going to say, um, you know, just, just to finish the process with um, like Tim mentioned too, coming you know, getting an idea of what the crew wants and then coming back with four or five sketches and then narrowing it down from there. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun because you hear a lot of interaction whether friendly or unfriendly between crew members saying yes or no, I want this, don't put that. And, and uh, you know, I'm just an observer here and, uh, but it does narrow down. That's, that's the whole goal. It gets down to a final piece. Um, most everybody's satisfied and it goes off uh, to the graph NASA graphics to do the formal uh, computer digital versions that become stickers and, and embroidery. But um, you know, the ultimate of course is, getting the invitation to the launch, getting the custom, uh, this is STS-89, uh, nice. first, uh, one of the uh, shuttle mirror missions, the uh, orbiter docking with the mirror. This is the first official patch flown in space that has the International Space Station on it. It's in that sunrise there, uh, uh, just silhouetted. But that was the first one that actually had the International Space Station, because that was the goal in the future and, uh, and being part of that office. But the ultimate is after the flight, um, you look behind Tim, he's, he's in front of his wall 
Look at that. So you get the flown patch with a montage yeah. of photos from the flight <laughs> and the crew crew signs it saying thanks thanks Tim for the fantastic patch. And and sometimes there's a flown US flag in it too and um, you know that, that's the great trophy. I mean we're, we're not getting paid for this. This is all gratis and um, you know the payment comes in like Tim says uh, this lives forever. It lives forever. So beautifully stated. So Morgan, I want to go a little bit to your process. I was looking at some of your work on your website. Um, I lo actually the one I loved in particular was the one for Crew One. That was one of the first missions that I guess. So I missed the shuttle almost entirely. Like I remember it when I was growing up, but I wasn't into space much like Morgan. You know, I got into it for me. I got into it later in life. It was it was kind of an accident type of thing. So I see what you designed for like the Crew One. And it's the stained glass window and the three musketeers all for one and one for all. Um, I just, I love that, that design. And we can share that a little bit later if you'd like to love what you did with that. That's not necessarily something I'm guessing that would be on a patch. That looks more like a t-shirt design or a poster design. So I kind of want to talk about how you uh, create within your process and, uh, you know, share a little bit about your art and what you do with that. All right. Well, I haven't really obviously worked with a crew. I've mostly designed for like Rocket Lab for uh, uncrewed missions and the launch company for stuff for really that matters most to their employees and fans of the company. So it's kind of a different target than having to please a crew, but it also like, you know has high visibility in a different way, especially for the Rocket Lab one. That's the first patch I really designed for a client and it's such an important mission for them and they gave me such free reign. They're like, put the name and show the rocket coming back down. And that's it. <laughs> so, which is, I mean, I'm sure everybody else can attest that that's both a good thing and a bad thing when you have free reign because you can either go completely in the right direction or completely in the wrong direction. And luckily, they really liked what I did for that one. Um, and for like the crew one, most of the stuff I've done on a lot of the stuff that got me to where I am uh, are really just passion projects, things that I did just because of my love of space. So like that's the crew one mission patch It ended up, I put it on a sticker and a t-shirt, but I really just made it originally to share on social media, just to, you know, spread awareness and of the mission and of space. And then it ended up, you know, on a t-shirt and a sticker and actually, uh, I was fortunate enough where the crew actually saw it before their launch. And one of the people working in mission control uh, sent me a message after their launch and let me know that they saw it and loved it. And then just a month or so ago, they actually uh, surprised me by taking a picture of it on the ISS in orbit. So it was pretty nice. crazy. So, I mean, I didn't technically make it for them, but it's different because, you know, they found it and loved it and kind of adopted it in a way, which it meant a lot to me that way too, because never in my life did I imagine that that was about to happen. So it's been kind of a whirlwind for me, for sure. I love it. So one of the things I want to talk about is everybody here is kind of talking about the designs that they've made. And I actually had somebody that, that asked me a question. So Tim, I want to start with you first and then I'll go around, uh, around the room and let me find it just real quick. Um, uh, Mel and Chris wanted to know, uh, they asked, I'm deep in study tonight, but I'm curious how many of these guests commission their work outside of mission, and mission patches and other organizations that are reaching out to them. Uh, for example, I've been wanting to commission a patch for my genderqueer rocketeer handle and not sure how to go about that. So if anybody wants to reach out to you to have you commit uh, to do commission work for them, like I did with Tim, that's actually you know what I told them. You know, I reached out to Tim. We were doing this thing with the student astronaut contest. It's like we got an awesome group of people. We want to design something. We're all going to pitch in some stuff gave him the information and he ran from there. I know everybody's got a different process. And Tim, I don't know if you, like, that's your normal process. Somebody just messaged you at one o'clock in the morning on Facebook, like I have a tendency to do to my friends. Uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, kind of your process, how people can get in touch with you. Is it on your website uh, and how you go about commission, uh, doing commission work for people? <clears throat> yeah, I, I accept uh, messages either via my website or, you know, Facebook messages, uh, you know, however, because I'm still, as, as even though I've been doing this for a, a number of years now, I'm still flattered when somebody says, hey, I've seen your work, I like it, can you help me? And, you know, the answer doesn't always uh, become sure, you know. I mean, I try to do as much pro bono work as I can. And if it's a nonprofit or, or if it's involving a school or something like that, uh, definitely uh, they get a, a big discount. 
yeah, other than a, a commercial organization. But uh, yeah, I, I accept questions from anybody, anywhere, any anytime. I mean, I've been to Space Fest a few times and I, uh, you know, met future clients there and, uh, you know, hand out my business card. And it's like Johnny Appleseed. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, it may be six months after you hand out a card where you hear something. But uh, yeah, I accept questions because, you know, when I was a kid growing up, artists uh, did, you know, one or two patches. Uh, you know, you can look up online and see which artists were involved in which Apollo mission patch and so forth. And uh, outside of Robert McCall, you know, they did maybe one or two patches. You know, I've been, you can tell by the wall, you know, I'm more fortunate than I could have ever have dreamed of back in 1973. So if I can help somebody else, uh, you know, realize their dream for a patch, uh, I'm more than happy to do it. Even if I'm just answering some questions and they run with it, you know, you know, send me a message and I'll be happy to answer it. Fantastic. Uh, Morgan, let's go to your process uh, next and how people can get in touch with you if they want to commission work. I'm pretty sure, I think I see it actually, it's just on your website. You go to the website and then there's a contact button. But is that generally the way that people can get a hold of you if they want to check out, uh, you know, getting you to commission some work? Yeah, that's uh, one way. Actually, a lot of the projects that I've gotten have weirdly been through Twitter DMs. Uh, people discover and share my stuff. I'm very active on Twitter. Um, so people share and discover my stuff. And then somehow somebody that needs a patch or a design or something discovers my work and then reaches out. So really on all social media, I'm a millennial. So what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That's what I do. Uh, Boris, can people reach out to you and get commissioned work from you? Uh, and if so, how can they do that? Is it something you still like that you want to do? Do you do stuff? Uh, Let us know. Well, for to share a sentiment, absolutely. Uh, I'm totally on board with what Tim is saying and Morgan as well. I haven't established my site. I haven't done anything in that. In fact, I've been trying to organize my own life big time. And, <laughs> and That's I'm 2021. Not it, 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 God willing, this 2021 will be different from 2020 because that year was uh, uh, something special. But I, frankly, did not have, um, how would I put this? I did not have uh, a uh, uh, an inkling uh, that I can make uh, money at it. Um, to me, the fact that uh, someone like Culbertson or someone like Padalka or someone like uh, this guy, uh, you know, if anyone the way, there, will remember, there we are. You know, uh, if you if you see that that thing on his, uh, um, that's the same thing. You see that that's 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 that's. Uh, the gift and it comes also from from the same um where's my camera there we go <laughs> there you go you get, there you go there it is it's perfect so uh, the, the, the boris it looks like you muted yourself sir you muted yourself i think okay now i'm there there Am you I? go there you are <laughs> so you're um, back go ahead how, how much of what I said is valid? Anyway, making long story short, I, I totally sign up with the sentiment of Tim and Morgan. I would love to do this. I actually love doing this. And I did a lot of pro bono for a school in New York and a, and a Columbia Museum in Los Angeles also for the teacher because of the uh, teacher's conference that is uh, conducted here. I haven't been participating in the last couple of years. Um, but uh, I also did a little bit pro bono work for my son. I mentioned about the patch that he designed. If you see this one, for the uh, uh, the call sign was Titans. So here is my uh, you know 15 year old, 16 year old boy designing this patch, and it becomes it. Um, you know, but Great. now that the captain in the space force he. 
he does his own things for for his uh uh missions you know nice. so uh for all intent and in, intents and purposes i've been very much helping others including my son but this happened to be the one that was international uh as you can see there's a saudi and uh saudi arabia and and uh all these guys are classes uh, of, of the Air Force beginnings. Um, so can people reach me? Um, I haven't, I didn't hide my email, uh, but so far I haven't been, uh, haven't been lucky because I kind of sort of uh, left my NASA environment and my Boeing environment, uh, enjoying the real retirement. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my my wife was motivated to create the work behind me because I'm still kind of a wing guy. Um, but uh, I wanted to say that you know, not not to dwell on the process itself. I actually did um, see the work that others did and the need um so i i i haven't exposed myself in 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 that world uh, i would love to go to space fest um i'd like to participate but uh, in all honest and sincere humility uh, <laughs> this this kid doesn't have it to a nth degree what mark and and team have and what mr dumas nil is you guys are moguls and i'm just a little uh <laughs> let's just say a pebble. i don't disagree with that <laughs> let's just say a pebble with a talent but i i do have a knack for symbology i always did uh and uh, uh here is that star that i was telling you about it's clearly a star and uh, uh someone would ask me what's the meaning of those uh, golden uh, orbits and i said well the gold changing hands between them and us um, but that was the the patch with this very uh, appendix that was done against the rules of nasa they would not allow me to make star tips uh, here or here but at the end i was fine with it and I was going to say to, to show you the white pages because that's again uh, something. This uh, Mark is guilty of this patch taking life uh, because he said that's your idea, and the idea is fabulous. Um, it is. It, uh, I think. I don't know I think, if you can hear me, Ron, but I, yeah. I uh, enjoyed the work of Robert McCall. Of course, you know everybody knows me knows about my Apollo 17 launch story and everything. And that's where I learned that outside artists did mission patches and Robert McCall did Apollo 17 is one of many. But when I saw Boris's Expedition 3 patch, it was the first time in a long time that I said, wow. I mean, I just, I love just looking at it and picking up all the small details and, you know, understanding the, the reason an element is in that patch and Boris, I don't have a college degree. I dropped out when I got married. So you don't have to be a uh, advanced degree. You just got to have the passion. And, and my friend, you have the passion. Listen, uh, for one, it would mean a hell of a lot to hear this then. Ron, <laughs> uh, when I look at team, when I look at team's work, I say for, for some reason, and I have to be forgiven because I always work in analogies. I say this is more <laughs> This is Mozart and this is Salieri, you know. <laughs> uh, but but frankly speaking, this is the this is the part where uh, the meaning of those things that, uh, like I said, the, the last one that had the white pages and uh, uh, you know calling the pages and putting in the the details in there, working with the people uh, that were actually making the patch um it was such a fun it was such an incredible incredible fun 
I can't even describe the emotional state when you finally see something that you literally created. And not only that you create it and you are the, you know, you're the Picasso, you are the one that make it happen. No, you did it for someone else and that someone else made it happen, not you. And that that's the kind of a thing that when uh, this, this is a joke, but this is a real joke that was done not by me. Uh, this was the the next one. Thank you so much. That looks great. This is the bad <laughs> for uh, by the time docking compartment the peers came to oh, life. Nice. Uh, you see, it's a golden uh, golden module with uh, uh, Gennady and Mike going out on that Strella. If you know that, that's like mm -hmm. that was the first time that they went out on Strella. Um, and it's actually quite far. It's 60 feet out. Wow. Okay. For space, 60 feet is gigantic. Just by comparison, the uh, the both hands of Canada arm only get you like 50 feet. But having said this, that size of a Russian flag was not my making. It was it was someone else had done that, and it was approved with that giant Russian flag and saying, okay, you can take the guy out of Russia, but you cannot take flag, flag out of him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I, uh, I am available by virtue of the fact that uh, you guys know me. Um, if there is something that can be done, and like I said, I volunteer this because people who know my work, uh, um, I did a little bit for, uh, there, there were two people, um, there's a company, uh, TIE, a software company, and the idea for their logo was uh, born out of conversation with, with me, and the idea of the uh, um, Expedition 4 also was born when I jokingly said, uh, uh, Lucy and the diamond in the sky, and boom, diamond in the sky it became. Um, uh, Lucy being uh, the wife of an astronaut. So all those things that that you see, this is that panel that went out for for approval for the expedition nine. Uh, I'm sure that Tim, you you have that one, I think. Oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, this one, uh, uh, all this works. All the when you're asking about the process. I struggle with well, the fact that I guess there really is, it's just like is there a way that people can get a hold of you if they want to get a patch done? Can we let's uh, let's do that one and then we'll come around because I want to talk I'll, to everybody about a little bit more of the patchworks. Email I will be more than, they can get a hold of you. With? I will be absolutely thrilled to help people uh, in whatever capacity. Uh, this is not something that makes and breaks for me my living, uh, <laughs> but your if you want to post my email. Or my uh, WhatsApp, I'll be more than delighted to uh, partake in, uh, you know, any competitive or any uh, uh, solo requests like uh, Morgan does. Uh, because I think when someone comes to you uh, and says, I want you to do it, there is a different stimuli um, to not disappoint a person. Versus when you are competing uh, in a competition environment, you put out your best and you just say, well, someone else has a better talent. Someone else nailed the, you know, hit the nail on the head. Um, so, you know, I had misses. I had, I missed a few things. I've seen things done. Uh, you know, people would take idea like the Expedition 10 uh, took that very cross of the flags and used it because they loved it. And I had no objections to that. I, um, yeah, if I, I can interrupt, if well, I can interrupt, say, I have, let's, yeah. I, <laughs> I have a story, I have a story related to that. Uh, and by the way, Yala Blue Boris Berezin, my drug. Okay. You know, uh, he's, he's fantastic. And, um, and he's right about when I moved from Johnson space center to California to the Dryden flight research center, I still had, more astronauts calling me, asking for designs. I did two more after I moved from Houston, but I kept saying, go to Boris, go to Boris. So <laughs> glad for that. They uh, did. <laughs> but I did want to echo what Boris was saying about 
uh, these crews sometimes they're asking three or four friends submit ideas. So we are competing with other artists and, and you know, it's, it's time for a thick skin to be told, Mark, uh, we decided to choose somebody else's design. And that happens and that's great. It's, it's great to be asked and uh, it's great to compete and it's great to win when you can. But I can tell one instance that was really interesting and uh, we can get to that again when I show my slides, but there was one uh, crew that asked me to uh, help with a design. I came with a design, I waited, waited, waited. Finally, they told me, sorry, uh, the crew voted on another one. Um, and then about a month later, I get a call from another astronaut saying, hey, I saw the design you did for that crew and I like it. Can we use it? Can we modify it? And I said, yeah, let's, said, go, yeah, for let's go for it. <laughs> and and that, that initial design flew actually as another shuttle mission. So that's kind of a little secret story. It could have been STS fill in the blank and it became STS 123. So they just, just to give an example, like Boris was saying, it's, it's a competition sometimes. Well, and, and Mark, what I want to ask you about is the, uh, you know, how you can, um, how people can get in touch with you to get designs work, uh, design work done, uh, you know, via the website that you sent me, I'll, I'll put that up whenever you start speaking, but how can people get a hold of you a little bit of that process of you putting these things together? Yeah. So my, on my uh, website, uh, I have my email address, uh, and I can share that tonight too, but there's my website on WordPress and uh, you just shoot me an email. That's all you have to do and tell me what you're looking for. If you need advice on something or you want to commission me. And uh, as I mentioned, I don't just do patches. I do fine art that hangs in museums. I even have one piece of art that's hanging at the Mission Control Center in Moscow, which is a great honor. But uh, 14 paintings in the Pentagon collection as a member of the Air Force art program. Nice. Very impressive. Blake, Thank let's uh, let's hear from you. We haven't heard uh, too, too much from you tonight. Tell us a little bit about how people can get um, in touch with you for it. Do you do it? I mean, obviously, you've done a lot of big missions, so there, there's a lot uh, a lot going on with you. But how do you do it? How do you kind of come about like doing these things? And how can people reach out to you and maybe get some work done if they want to? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that's interested in having some design work done. Uh, I do a variety of freelance projects and uh, easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, via my email address, uh, which is blake.dimmasnell at sbcglobal.net, uh, or I do have a portfolio. Mike, I think you froze on us. We may have to go back. Um, there we oh, go. Yep, there. There. <laughs> I feel like that... Uh, you know, there's been 60 plus years of mission patches done for NASA, and uh, I find it to be a very fun challenge that with that much history and that many different designs, you would think that everything has been done and that there's really nothing new to try to approach. But, um, you know, I look at everyone as a new challenge and I try to to kind of break up some of the things that have been done before and try to change the design of the patches from in terms of the shapes and, you know, the, the contrast uh, lighting and color usage on them. And uh, so it's just kind of a personal challenge. Uh, I've had, you know, I've had some crews that have been very um, specific about having some ideas as to the route that they'd like to go. And then others, you know, it's, it's just kind of a free for all. You, you just, they, they want to see what you can do without, you know, having any limitations without having any preconceived ideas of what you think that they're looking for and just uh, want to see what you can really push the envelope with and come up that come up with something that's fresh. And so that's certainly something that I've attempted to do over the years. And um, so I, I'm constantly trying to trying to do that. And um, it's just a personal challenge. Usually, um, you know, I. I don't spend a ton of time on on sketching things out on paper. I will do a little bit of that before I start working in the computer on these designs. But um, I really prefer to actually not go back to the crew with the design until I have a very polished design that's got a lot of color already in place, uh, some fonts narrowed down on it, stuff like that. And um, you know, I want them I want them to see what um, this design will look like, what the full potential uh, of the design has. Um, when it's rendered electronically uh, in, in full color and not just what's sketched out. So I sometimes that that 
that has come back to bite me a little bit from the standpoint that we have had to go back and rework things that, you know, maybe could have been done a little earlier, but a lot of times we, we kind of get it nailed on the first try. And, and then it's just a matter of tweaking little things here and there uh, and making minor adjustments from that point forward. Um, so overall, it's been a wonderful experience working with the crews. Obviously it's an honor as everybody has said. And um, you know, I just continue to try to do different things and use different techniques from design to design. I, uh, a lot of the designs, we haven't gotten too bogged down in the symbolism as much as really capturing the beauty of space flight. I, I kind of look at these as doing landscape paintings in a way, and I really love incorporating depth into my designs and finding a way to, you know, find interesting ways to incorporate the number of the mission, which also can come back to bite you a little bit, especially if the crews shift and you know, they want to take that design with them and the number changes. And if it's heavily incorporated, then that can be a little, a little challenging, but um, other, usually it, it works out fine and, and we, we get good usage out of it. So um, yeah, it's, it's a, it really is a, a wonderful experience getting to work with these. Folks. And um, Fantastic. I, I, uh, I, I, I'm just very honored. Sorry about that. We were getting some feedback there. Can you hear me? You can go yeah. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I've done, uh, I don't do, you know, part of my job is, is actually doing a lot of uh, a variety of division branch level project designs all here for, for things going on at JSC. I've, I've done more patch designs than I can honestly count. <laughs> so uh Anyways, uh, it's it's fun to to apply different things to any of these designs, whether it's for a specific mission or uh, just for for a project. And um, you know, one of the things that is especially fun with like the project designs is that we really don't have any limitations on those things. You know, we do have some requirements and guidelines that we need to stick by when we're doing these these flight patches. And there is a color limit and you know, text does need to be uh, incorporated at a specific size or larger um, to be rendered legibly on the, the patches and stuff. And so um, that's another level of the, the fun and the challenge of designing these things, uh, that, that it's not just about what you're trying to incorporate, but the fact that you're trying to capture this scene with such beauty, but you're maybe only having to do it with, you know, eight colors. So, um, the, uh, the the woes of a graphic designer, you know. <laughs> so I uh, I really I really like being forced to to work under those guidelines and and try to make it work out well. Love it. So it looks like we do have a question from the audience here. Uh, uh, ben from Science Actually is asking, got to know what the most requested art was and what the most do not add request was. So I think this is going to you, Mark. So we'll throw it to you, and that's up to you if you can answer that question or not. If there's a bit of what was most requested and then also what you heard do not add requests. Was there any like really weird one that you had? It's like, don't put bananas on it. I hate bananas or something weird like that. <laughs> okay. Um, it has to do with uh, putting the space shuttle on a patch and a certain commander just said, this is at our very first meeting. He says, uh, don't, Open the payload bay doors. It's the ugliest payload I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, it was not a deployed payload. It was a payload bay full of experiments, you know, ob observation experiments, sensors, telescopes, or whatever. And, um, you know, I know, you know, people are going to go search at my patch designs. But, yeah, he just <laughs> said, he just said, you just come up with something. But if you show the orbiter, close the pay payload bay doors. Don't open them. It's an ugly payload. Now that, that was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty and, great uh, story. Yeah, and, and then the, the next. Yeah, and then the <laughs> other, the other. I, you know, maybe the most requested, but but um, the astronauts when they are selected, they uh, are when they're first selected, they are awarded a silver lapel pin of that shooting star symbol, and then when they make their first flight, there's a post-flight ceremony in which the commander gives the first time flyers a gold lapel pin of that of that uh, shooting star symbol. So that's important. And you'll see that on some of my patches and some aren't just in this form. They're like Boris, a very, you know, we go through a creative process to make these different versions of that. But 
basically the shooting star with an orbit. Um, it, it, you know, it just symbolizes so much to an astronaut, you know, represents their flight into space. And so that, for me, that was requested a lot. Some didn't care. Some, you know, wanted a, other symbology, but I uh, uh, hope that answers the question. That's a good question. That was a great one. Uh, Tim, Blake, anything that you've had that's a really weird request or really, you know, just, okay, well, that, that sounds really challenging? I, I don't say weird, but uh, I found out through this whole experience that astronauts are like baseball players. They, they have a little sense of superstition. So on the uh, expedition, on uh, STS-129, they wanted uh, the entire uh, uh, U.S. continent as much as possible shown on the patch. But they wanted to make sure that there were no clouds over KSC because they didn't want a weather delay. And you might as well keep the clouds away from Houston because, you know, that could prevent them from leaving Houston to fly to KSC. So, you know, it was, it was just, you know, interesting. I had never had a request like that before. And by God, we had a clear sunny day on the patch and a clear sunny day at launch. That is awesome. I absolutely love that one. Blake, you have any funny, like, well, interesting, unique stories about people that wanted you to create something? You know, honestly, I haven't really had any crazy requests or, or such specific things, but um, I suppose we, I did have a little bit of a happy accident um, on one of the designs that I did, and it was purely coincidental. Uh, it was not planned. I'll, I'll just say, you know, to, if anybody comes up and asks about it today, you know, we'll, We'll kind of nod along and be like, oh yeah, that was that was planned all along. But on the <laughs> on the on the uh, mainly because it's cool. I, on the Expedition Forty Five design, so I, I had the pleasure of working with Chell Lindgren on that. Chell's a wonderful guy. He's um, as much of a pop culture sci-fi nerd as he is a space nerd. As he is, you know, he. I feel like he and I we we really get along great and and enjoy a lot of similar hobbies and stuff and. Um, it was the first time that he was flying on with that, with that design. And he actually did have, you know, a, a specific idea of the shape of the patch. He wanted it to, to kind of be like an arrowhead style design. And, um, and so I started working off of the sketch that he had developed and uh, we, we started fleshing it out a little bit more. And uh, I ended up adding um, kind of as a, as a nod back to the expedition expedition three patch, because it was one of my personal favorites um, we added the, the book of knowledge along the bottom because I, I really needed something that I felt would kind of serve as a foundation for the design and kind of ground it a little bit and, and add a little bit of extra dimension so it wasn't such a triangular looking shape. And um, we got through the process of working on that design. And about, oh, I don't know, two months later, the, the crew poster came out. And it's probably one of the more popular crew posters that I suppose have, has come out uh, recently. And as you know, a lot of the crews have done a lot of themed crew posters that usually tie back to some sort of a, a popular film. And uh, they had chosen to do a Star Wars themed poster. And it's a great, great design. They, they borrowed someone's like very authentic Jedi robes and they got everybody, the cosmonauts, Scott Kelly, everyone, they got dressed up in the studio to, to do a photo shoot for this thing. And the poster comes out and I love it. I think we it's fantastic. We have that at Space Foundation. We have that posted. We have a wall of like astronaut yeah. photos. We have that. I've never heard anybody else talk about that. I love it. So so I thought it was great. I actually didn't even really know that Chell was that big of a Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. I thought it was, you know, and it wasn't the first design that's ever had a, a tie to Star Wars. You know, uh, you know, they flew one of the screen use loop lightsabers up on one of the uh, STS missions and they did a special variation of the patch for that. But um, anyways, no, no crew had done a, a poster with Star Wars before. And so as soon as it came out and, and the patch is just right in the middle of the, of the, the poster, Chell and I started getting emails from some people and they were like, we just absolutely love the poster design that you did. And it was incredibly brilliant that you shape the patch to look like a Star Destroyer. It's like the silhouette of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> and Shell and, and I, like, like, 
<laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it, it does look like a Star Destroyer. So we should just run with this, right? Like we, <laughs> we, we totally meant to do this, right, Chell? <laughs> That's great. Anyways, I had I had no clue that that he was already thinking about doing a Star Wars themed poster, but it was never discussed or it was never planned to to make the patch shaped like that. And so, you know, like I said, not a weird request, but it was a, a funny situation that came out of one of the designs that we worked on and. Uh, something that I, I love joking with him about today. We get a good laugh out of it. That's brilliant. And somebody over on Twitch has said uh, they they did the little Bob Ross emojis and said "Happy Accident." You know that was a, a famous Bob Ross one, so I had to laugh about that one. Uh, Morgan, let's go to you next. Uh, is there anything really interesting you've had? Unique, funny, weird requests? Anything that you really like? And I also got to uh, I got to show the Rocket Lab one because I didn't know that you'd done it. I'm, I'm a big Rocket Lab fan. Uh, love them. Got to meet uh, Peter a few years ago at Space Symposium and interview him. I just love his personality and the type of individual he is. Like we don't we don't have a whole lot of C- we got some really awesome CEOs, him, Tori Breno, and others. And there's some you don't really get to connect with too much, but he's so easy to relate to and, and speak with. And I love that. So I'm a big fan of theirs, and I love the work that you did on this one. But I want to uh, want to go to you. Tell us a little bit about maybe something interesting that you've had. All right. Well, I've had kind of in between. Uh, I've worked a lot with uh, the launch company. I think they recently got acquired. Oh, gosh, I wish I remembered who it was by. But they did some uh, internal patches. One of them, they did the RSS, uh, the rotating service structure teardown for 39A. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me that one of the reasons they won that proposal was because they were able, the only ones that were able to tear it down while SpaceX could still use it to launch. So what their idea was, I love working with them as a Ben Kelly at the launch company. I love working with them. He has such good ideas. So we wanted to incorporate somehow showing like the bones of the rotating service structure as it's being destroyed uh, along with the brand new, you know, launch tower that's there now at 39A. So that was a pretty, it was weird, but also super, super cool. That one's also, I mean, I'm sure you could pull it up. It's on my website too. Um, it's like the second one down, but that was like a weird. That's on the, that was on the, uh, patches. Which one was that one? We're it's on the mission patches page. It's, uh, okay. not, it's underneath the, I need more moon one. It's the one that's, uh, they named it, uh, cables, Cajuns and most of a plan. Oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. This is super funny. I didn't realize you did something for TJ. Like TJ and I had a chat the other day. Yeah. I didn't know that you did the, the one TJ for, I need that. more space. Yeah. That's awesome. So is it, hold on. The, uh, what was which one am I looking for again? The launch company, cables, Cajuns, and most of a plan. Yep. Okay, I'm downloading it now. Yeah, so that one was it's an interesting one. I'm actually working on another one for them right now. Uh, that hopefully they'll release pretty soon. Um, but yeah, that was crazy. And also the Rocket Lab one. That was more fun for me because they kind of just gave me free reign. Yeah, and like they have Rocket Lab. I love Rocket Lab. I'm such a Rocket Lab fan girl. I can't help it. I mean. Their rockets are cool. Peter Beck is so awesome. Their whole communications team is so nice and just, they're all great. I just love that company. And their their names are so cool. So I just really wanted to play into the name Return to Sender. So I just remember sitting down and sketching out so many different ideas. Uh, one of them was like the rocket falling back into an envelope, like literally returning it to the sender <laughs> in an envelope. Uh, but they ended up really liking the stamp idea which if they saw it on the fairing it just looks so cool because it's like i literally slapped a stamp on this rocket to send it to space like good to fly right boris good to fly (laughs) i love their stuff i actually had laughed with uh peter when i was talking to him because i'm a huge fly of the concords fan and one of them was it's business time and New, yeah. New Zealand band, and I hear that. And it's great because when I asked him about it, whether or not that was the intention, he does the great CEO answer. He's just really good. He's really great at, you know, taking questions and answering them in a professional way, but also giving a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And he totally did that. And uh, he's like, and then he, after he went through all that, he's like, but you can probably guess where we got the idea from. After he said this big, you know, qualified answer, it was it was really great. He's uh, he's incredible to uh, to chat with and, and talk about space with. 
Boris, any amazing stories that you have? Any cool stories, weird stories, interesting stories of a patch that anybody's you know presented to you before? Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you this much. The stories are abound. Uh, I always found myself smack in the middle, either either congratulated or literally told, get the hell out of here. Um, one of the things that, uh, for example, um, gave me a, a, a chills, if you will, I got, <clears throat> I got to meet Nicole and uh, uh, incredibly talented artist, incredibly talented astronaut and altogether fantastic engineer of all the things. And uh, when they were doing the EVA, um, <clears throat> she literally congratulated me and, and, and a team that created something that resembled, uh, nobody knew how to call an item uh, because it was something that literally did the function of a wedge. And uh, it just so happened that I created um, a patch um, addition for that particular mission because that patch, uh, that, that piece, and I, I'm looking at it, <clears throat> that piece was remarkably needed to um, both save the face for NASA and uh, vindicate Boeing uh, for not spotting something where, in fact, AMS, Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, was coming in about six months. And uh, as it was going to its destination, nobody noticed that in that destination is my uh, video camera that I was a manager uh, uh, for. And that video camera could, uh, it had to be moved. And uh, lucky for me, this EVA was done uh, with Nicole and, and two more wonderful guys. Uh, and uh, that episode, um, I created something that uh, could have been patented. So I approached my manager, my boy manager, and I said, don't you think this is something that is a way to uh, uh, at least get some sort of a, a a statement that that thing is designed by Boeing and it belongs to Boeing. And he says, what do you want? A Nobel Prize for a door wedge? And so that thing became the wedge. And so that wedge is something that uh, avoided, that permitted to avoid very expensive cable make, very expensive... Basically, the EVA lasted 45 minutes and it was a fun time for them. Um, but when I put on that patch, I put a, uh, Statue of Liberty, uh, not Russians, not Japanese, nobody complained, but my nice NASA manager said, it's too American, replace it with something else. So I put a dove in there. So there it is. It still is, uh, kind of an empty space. space. Uh, so I, I had the same emotional experiences when they uh, um, come back after about 20 tries and say, well, someone else had succeeded. So um, congratulations from space or the uh, um, telephone calls. Uh, not actually the video phone calls. Uh, where they uh, adhere the patch of yours to the uh, panels and inside the space station. It's it's it, it's a very pleasant moment um, that you can you can tell as a story to your kids or uh, or even grandchildren. Thank God I I'm hopeful that maybe one of those days I will become. But so far I'm an old. Man yes. hours, so. <laughs> my grandmother always uh, yelled at me for that one. I'm like, oh, why don't I have any grandbabies yet? I'm like, I'm sorry, Mama. I just ain't got to it yet. I've been busy. I've been doing some stuff. Mark, I know that you uh, dropped a comment and you said that you have a great story about NASA HQ rejecting a patch 
And not one, not two, but three exclamation marks. So this is going to be a good story. That's the most excited I've seen anybody be in the chat tonight. So you got to tell us about it. And we're actually, we're getting some great laughs from people too. Uh, ben, the one that actually asked this question, said that these are the best answers ever. So Mark, hit us with that one. We got to, we got to know what it is. <laughs> You're mute. Mark, you're muted. You're muted, Mark. Yep. There we go. Okay. Thank you. So, so when it, going back to the process, I hear a lot of noise on the line here. I don't know where that's coming from. There it goes. That was worse okay. aside. I just muted, and we're good. Okay. So, uh, part of the process, uh, once the crew is done, decides this is what we want. I create like a final piece of art that's going to be given to NASA graphics. It actually goes to NASA headquarters first. And, you know, it's more of a blanket approval. By this time, you know, it's, it's pretty mature looking, looks cool and all this stuff. Well, um, this one patch I did uh, for, uh, let's see, it was uh, STS-86. Um, that mission was a, a shuttle mirror mission. And on that mission, it was uh, part of the plan was for uh, Scott Perzinski, who had, who was the uh, designee for the patch, so he and I worked together a lot on the patch. So Scott Perzinski and Vladimir Titov were to perform an EVA uh, uh, during the time they're on the mirror. And uh, so it was going to be a real momentous occasion for an American to be in a Russian Orlon EVA spacesuit. And uh, Scott Perzinski went through a lot of training for that. Uh, and so part of this design process work involved uh, the symbology for the Russian suit design bureau, uh, Zvezda, which Boris told you means star, and they have a star in their symbol. And I, and I just thought that's a cool symbol. You know, I'm going to put that on there. So that, that design went to uh, NASA headquarters. And um, it, we got this. Uh, one day I got a phone call from Scott Pierzynski. And pretty much a panic. It was, you know, it's the time to start getting patches and stickers made and getting them printed on checklists and all, you know, all the documentation for mission control. And uh, he told me the story about, he says, basically, it's a private company. He said, it's as if we put Coca Cola on the patch. You know, we're endorsing a product. And NASA headquarters says, we're not endorsing company products. You know, the, the capitalists in Russia now were. You know, it was becoming, uh, a you know, it was a capitalist country now. And uh, they were learning that advertising pays. And if you recall, Russian rockets were launching with Pizza Hut logos on them. And they were making money off of that. So NASA headquarters decided that uh, they did not want to endorse a product. And we had to fix it. And so this was a matter of uh, a few minutes uh in, I was in Scott's office, the crew office, they had a big whiteboard. So I, I drew the patch uh, on the whiteboard and trying to figure out, okay, what are we gonna move around? What are we gonna change? And um, if I could share the screen. My you screen. Yeah, uh, just at the bottom. Okay. Yep, yeah, at the bottom, yeah. you got the share okay. screen. There we go. Go from there, yep. All right. Uh, Bring up everyone here while we wait. Okay, I said allow. Select. Yep, it'll it'll bring it up at the bottom of the screen here for me whenever whenever okay. it pops up. Has it come up yet? I don't. Select. Oh, I see. It says select window or screen. Okay, entire screen. Yep. There we go. Okay. There it is. Okay. Right. So uh, there's the collection of patches I designed. Uh, uh, we'll go to the full screen here. So down here at the bottom, uh, middle here, STS-86. Um, so there's the Svezda symbol. Oops, went back too much here. There's the Svezda symbol. And I had it right there in the middle of the patch, just like you see that. And uh, there's uh, Scott Perzinski and Vladimir Titov on their EVA. And here's the shuttle and mirror in orbit together. And you see the shooting star, uh, kind of the hidden symbology is uh, the American flag down here and notice the swap in colors. That's the Russian flag up there. So there's a little clever uh, juxtaposition of the red, white, and blue uh, of the Russian flag and the US flag. But in the heat of the moment, I just looked at that Svezda symbol and I said, well, there's the world. Let's just, you're in orbit around the earth. 
let's just put the world there. And you know, like I said, in a matter of just a few minutes, that's what we, that's what we decided. That's it. Went to headquarters and it got approved. So, um, but it was a, kind of a panic moment wondering what are we going to do? Because that, that looked really cool with the Spezda star in the middle there. Uh, questions? Awesome. Questions? Um, Any questions? Questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course this is a question, I think. If, if, if we have time later, uh, this is an interesting sure. story here. STS 83 and 94 look almost identical. Um, and uh, so I'll go back to um, unsharing. Let's see if I can do that. No worries. I can remove it and put it backstage. Boris, did you have a question slash comment, sir? The, 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 this, is, this is the funniest thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I was going through the airport at Hobby, and I'm coming into the middle aisle as you keep on going, and I see this gigantic uh, screen that's, you know, literally uh, hoisting the, uh, now I'm going to share. Uh, let's see if it comes out. Uh, how do I do this? Okay. Uh, share the screen. So here is this. Uh, Two monitors. Well, I don't have a monitor, so I'm going to have to do it this way. Uh, this is the one. So can you guys see it? This is this is the moment no. when uh, this is this Not is one of, the, one of the crew. We don't, we don't see it. Can you see it? No. Yeah, we can't see it yet. Yep. Oh. So how do I do that? Okay, share. Well, here we go. There we go. So, so here I am. I'm going through the. There we go. You see it now. Yes. So I'm going through the uh, airport, and I see this question: What did you do today? And literally, <laughs> these guys are installing the camera and waving the hand to me at that very moment. That just happened, uh, you know, just a couple weeks earlier, and. Uh, the funny part was that the next time I get the same panicky call, uh, I will not. You, you will see the same. It, it comes from from uh, Mike Fink, and uh, he says, "Boris, we're not going to be Expedition Ten. We're going to be Expedition Nine. So everything that you have, everything is so good, but it's not going to happen because we need to change to nine. I said, "No problem. You guys are flying on a rocket." There now you have a Roman nine. <laughs> yeah. And as I did this, as I did this, my son was standing over my shoulder watching these things in amazement and said, Dad, you can impress yourself even more if you take the one flame out of the rocket and flip it around the astronaut symbol. You see that? Into a conventional Egyptian nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> You see that? Where's my finger? Yeah. There we go. That's, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. You know, Clever. And, and, Clever. So, so now he did this, uh, and of course, flying baton. But the significance here is that you can see that a lot of things that um, become pleasant uh, when I put the. Uh, uh, Star of David on a on a break of wing right there. Yeah, the very the very guy that uh, added two blue stripes was Gennady Padalka. He said, you know, that star requires two blue light, two blue lines of Israeli flag. So, uh, in a sense, they uh, wanted to make sure that Colombia wasn't the last patch and. Again, all the stars. This is where someone else calls me up and says, hey, you got all the stars for American uh, fallen heroes. How about the Russians? I said, I don't know how to do this. And they said, well, why don't you just put five Russian stars around the Golden Eagle? We both have a Golden Eagle on the national as a national symbol. So biggest surprises sometimes happen when... Uh, you walk through the airport and you see your own, you know, your own work 
displayed in there and uh, someone else calls you up in the last minute in a panicky call what are we gonna do and <laughs> amazingly uh, you give a natural simple answer and you don't even know where it came from so I call that a moment from above I you know so for all of you guys my head is off uh, I don't have an office, but maybe I should start doing that and and display things like Blake. I'm more into those games behind you, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Who here's not into video games, right? So uh, it looks like we got about 20 minutes left. So what I want to do is I want to go to, to each person. If there's anything else that you like, share photos, patches, anything else, uh, any words of wisdom for folks that want to get into the art design, anything like that, uh, any of the stories that you would like to share, words of wisdom, you're free to do that. Um, so, Tim, I'm going to start with you first, and then we'll uh, we'll go around to each person. Tim, you're muted, sir. All right. Uh, the one thing I think, and everybody will agree with, is that... Uh, Every crew that we've worked with uh, are, are incredibly talented, obviously, but they're also very kind. And uh, one of the things uh, that uh, uh, I do now, and I did a little bit then, was uh, commemorative patches. And as the uh, shuttle program was ending, I designed a simple... Um, uh, patch I call farewell and thank you and I believe I sent that to you already and it depicts the shuttle backing away from the station and the shuttle crew has placed the uh, robot arm uh, into a proper salute for the entire workforce and uh, uh, I sent that uh, up uh, via email to uh, uh, the Expedition 28 crew and um, also a, uh, a picture <clears throat> because my youngest grandson had just been born uh, before Atlantis uh, launched. And uh, they printed the photograph and they put uh, the, the picture in the cupola window showing Atlantis behind it. And they said, uh, thought you'd like to see this picture uh, with uh, its ride home. And uh, as Atlantis backed away, uh, Mike Fossum sent me an email and, and he took a picture of Atlantis as it backed away with the, the robot arm and the boom. So it wasn't able to give a, uh, a salute like I depicted. But he said it was just a very simple email message with the photo and it said, life imitating art. And so, uh, you know, getting the phone calls from space, uh, and the, and the souvenirs that they uh, are very generously provide. Uh, these people are tremendous. Uh, they're very kind, they're gracious, they appreciate the work that we do. And I'm just a lucky guy that, that gets to work with some amazing folks. And uh, I'm in awe of, uh, of all these uh, artists tonight. Uh, you know, I, Blake alluded to our competition. Um, I, competed in the uh, the shuttle end of program competition and I thought I had a good design and and it, and it had a lot of go, uh, go, going for it but uh, when I saw Blake's I, I understood why he won but I took the bronze so you know in Olympic parlance I was still on the on the medal stand and uh, you know I'm just glad I don't have to compete against Blake and Mark and Boris and you know because uh, you know, your competition really ups your game, but, you know, I can only get beat up so much. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Tim, check the private chat. I just need to, need you to help me with something there real quick. Mark, let's go to you next. Anything else that you'd like to share with, uh, with everyone that's watching in tonight? Any words of wisdom, how they can get involved, and uh, also, you know, where people can find you, social media, if you have that, all that fun stuff. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna share my screen again to show you a couple slides and uh, get through that. Our screen, wow. Okay, is it working? You're on the show, thanks. Can you see? 
the slide? We can. Yeah, if you want to make it full screen, I'll make it, I think, a little. Okay. Let's see. Um, so uh, one of the things I tell people when you're beginning your art career or any time during your art career is to uh, find a mentor, find a guide, find a, another artist, uh, collaborate with other artists, learn from them, learn their experiences. And, and uh, as Tim had the opportunity to, you know, to, to, to be able to uh, know Robert McCall and, and experience uh, his, what his story is and uh, have these opportunities. And, and I just want to show a couple of shots. Uh, one at the upper left was when he visited the NASA Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base, Dryden Flight Research Center, now called Armstrong Flight Research Center. And um, to show some of my fandom for his art, he had designed the patch in the movie 2001 Space Odyssey that, that the crew wore of this fictitious United States Astronautics Agency of the future in 2001. And uh, you see it on the on the, on the uh, spacesuits there that Kier DeLay and Gary Lockwood are wearing. Um, so, you know, part of that inspiration uh, came from things like that. Uh, I had the honor of him awarding me a, uh, an award, a gold award for my art of the space shuttle there, you see. He also created a mural and I'm the central figure in that mural. So it's just a total honor to be, um, you know, within his realm like that. Um, Here's a sample of some of my artwork, and the upper left is STS-71 mission, and he and Robert McCall designed the patch, and I did the painting, and uh, Hoop Gibson just loved that that we had collaborated together on depicting uh, that mission. But this is an assortment of the of the artwork that I do in oil painting and acrylic painting. Um, I'll just zip through. My last slide I want to show is an ultimate validation to say that your artwork has not only been in space, but still is still up there. And if you see interior shots of the space station, it's full of the stickers. And, uh, you know, it's just an honor to be part of it. Here are the STS-123 crew is putting the sticker. Uh, that happens to be the airlock uh, on the space station outside the airlock. And uh, they put their signatures around the patch. And, uh, you know, Mike Foreman doing an EVA, you see the, see the patch uh, on, the, on the front of the EMU there. And uh, Dom Gorey's pointing to a checklist with the with the patch on it. Anyway, that, that's just the ultimate validation. But if you want to get a hold of me, uh, the website has been posted, and or through uh, my email, which is also posted. And I appreciate this opportunity to share all this. So, questions? Well, I'll give a, yeah, I'll give a little bit of a uh, of a of a, a share there down at the bottom. You can see. Uh, that way you can check out Mark's work and you got the uh, the website right there. So go check him out and, uh, you know, make sure you, you see what they're up to. So next up, let's go to Blake. Then we'll go to Morgan and then Boris. So Blake, let's, uh, let's chime in, have you chime in, tell us a little bit about where people can find you. Any advice if people want to get into what you do, uh, anything that you'd like to share? Yeah. You know, I'd like to just echo Mark's uh, and, and Tim's sentiments about how much of an influence uh, Robert McCall was. I, I truly wish that I had had the opportunity to meet him in person uh, while he was still with us and uh, just, you know, cannot express how influential his, his work has been to, to me and obviously all of us over the, over the decades. Um, you know, I certainly have tried to echo um, the way that he would use color and light in his designs uh, across some of the ones that I've done. Uh, you know, as far as people that, that have an interest in doing these things and uh, would like to, to, you know, get into the aerospace industry as, as an artist and not necessarily as an engineer, you know, I, I would say that the, the one thing that I, I was so kind of surprised by, uh, but not really surprised by, was, you know, just how much of an opportunity there is throughout the entire industry for just about any sort of a trade, no matter what your, your skill sets are, what your interests are. Um, there is a need for every one of every skill set in this industry. And, you know, like I said earlier, I never thought that I would be working in this industry, even though I grew up and I, I adored this stuff. Uh, I really never thought that I'd be able to contribute to it and be a part of it. And it wasn't, uh, for a lack of trying, I just really didn't think that the opportunity would, would come about uh, because who would want to leave 
a job like this and who would want to leave this industry getting to do these things. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, keep working towards your goals and your dreams and your aspirations. And there are opportunities for every kind of person of every kind of background uh, in this in this industry. And, uh, you know, I think that we are right now we are on the cusp of a of a wonderful renaissance in space flight, I feel like. The Artemis program is going to usher in a very exciting new uh, era in spaceflight, along with what Commercial Crew is is already providing us, and and you know where it where you know SpaceX and these companies hope to go in the future as well. So I think that we've probably got more interest in the aerospace industry right now than we've had probably in the last 20 years, and that's a very exciting thing. Uh, and I really do hope that. Uh, the work that all of the engineers and scientists and even us artists here uh, are doing is inspirational to people and will, you know, continue to make them want to um, follow doing what they want to do. You know, technology today with social media, uh, you know, and, and just the digital aspect of everything makes it so much easier to, to get your work out there. And uh, I think that that, is, is just a wonderful tool that everybody can utilize. Um, as far as uh, what I've got going on right now, I, uh, I am still actively working on uh, designing all sorts of designs. Uh, I, I do have an uh, expedition patch coming up very soon uh, that I'm very about. It is uh, just another one of those unique uh, stabs <laughs> at something different. And, uh, you know, fits in with the number very well, uh, the number of the flight. And uh, I think we'll be seeing that publicly released here uh, sooner rather than later. So I'm excited about that. Um, recently, I've, I've been working a lot with. Hint, uh, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working with. Uh, I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, you know, uh, NASA has their processes for how things get rolled out and when they're going to get rolled out. But uh, uh, you don't have to say anything. I think we know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I've uh, I've got always got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, I've been working with Space Center Houston, our, our local visitor center here, a lot uh, over the last few years, and uh, we just uh, got done collaborating on a, a wonderful Apollo 13, uh, you know, uh, anniversary exhibit statue display where I, I did the backdrop for that, um, and also worked on a large for for the visitor center here uh, a couple of years ago that just got installed right, uh, right before the pandemic, about within a few months or so. And, um, anyways, uh, yeah, you know, please, uh, please feel free to look me up on Facebook. Um, I, I have a large variety of designs that I do ranging from patches to crew posters, uh, a lot of other NASA outreach designs. Um, I've done things that are used to go lobby Congress to increase NASA's budget, you know, stuff like that, all sorts of marketing collateral. So um, it's uh, it's exciting being able to stay on your toes and continue to do this stuff. And uh, I really hope that if anyone has any questions, would like advice, feedback, you know, I'm more than happy to chat with them. I look forward to it. I love this industry. I've, I've always grown up loving it. And uh, I look forward to seeing a lot of new, fresh, young talent that will come about in the in the near future as well. So I appreciate the time being on here this evening. And it was truly wonderful to have you. And uh, let's go to let's go to Morgan next. Morgan, tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. Any, um, I mean, you know, you're you're a bit of this new generation, and, uh, and you're you're doing a lot of cool things. So I know that there are a lot of people here that are doing stuff, but. Um, Blake, Morgan, you know, everybody else, are you doing, you know, t-shirts and are you doing stickers? Are you doing everything? Or are you just doing, you know, is it really just patches? I know that everything's kind of changing with all that now. Morgan, I know you're doing that. I personally have a spreadsheet store and, and we have designs from people all the time. So I'll reach out to everybody about that a little bit later. Maybe we can do some design stuff together, but Morgan, let us know a little bit about what you're up to and, uh, and how people can uh, check your stuff out and anything you want to share. All right. Well, um, I kind of uh, like I, I'm the new generation, I guess. Uh, I was found this later in my life so far, but you know, later in my life is a lot earlier than most people. But <laughs> um, I mean, this I can't imagine working in any other industry. There's a reason that yeah, I fell in love with everything space. It's just so important to our present and our future, and it's affected life 
for people, whether they know it or not, in so many positive ways. And just, I feel so grateful to be a part of it and to be able to, you know, I work now, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, with NASA headquarters in the office, like public engagement on social media and doing exhibits. So like my job is my passion, it's spreading, you know, awareness of space flight. And it just really, I mean, last year I went through, I mean, actually the last two years and Tim obviously knows, but I went through a really long health journey. I was diagnosed with cancer out of nowhere and uh, kind of had to battle that. And then once I got past it, I just really didn't want to do anything than what I absolutely loved. And that's what I'm doing now. And I mean, my best advice to people who want to follow this path and get into this is, you know, build a strong network of people that are like minded or have the same passions and, you know, mindsets about these types of things, because that's really how I found you know, my job with my Rocket Lab patch, how I got work through the launch company, how I found my full-time job now. It was all through people knowing me, my work, and becoming friends with these people that they thought, hey, you'd be a good fit for this job. You should totally apply. And lo and behold, that's what I have now. And so I just really feel extremely lucky to get to do what I love every single day. And on top of that, I'm also a crazy person that likes to start my own personal projects on top of my full-time job. And on top of that, then selling my work as prints and stickers and t-shirts. So I like to give myself way more work than I need. <laughs> but yep. it, you know, it right does feel like work, but it also does feel like work. But you know, it's hard to divide when you do what you love for a job. Yeah, I think a lot of us are very, very lucky in that. Um, oh, okay. This this is interesting, and I, I want to rephrase this from the way that ben, that Ben asked it. But do you think that we're going to see mission patches for Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, SpaceX, with them sp sending people up with great regularity? Do you think it's something that everybody's going to want? Do you think this is going to be kind of a bigger market? Do you think they would all want to get patches? Is this something that's about to be a boom with commercial space flight? Or do you think that this is going to, you know, should this, not should it, but do you think it'll stay more towards, you know, the, the bigger missions? And, yeah, I know a lot of people are, are creating stuff on their own. So does anybody want to chime in on that one? What do you think? Boris? Yeah. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start uh, up very close right now. I'm going to show something to Morgan because you deserve it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, um, I mentioned earlier that I, I try to go into Boeing Flight Museum. I try to go to, uh, it's a remarkable thing. Just yesterday, uh, I went to see my old um, building, uh, building number seven in Renton. And two engineering centers are completely shut down. The buildings are empty. No one's there. People working from home. The only thing in the building that is open to public and to employees is the Boeing gift store. And when you go into Boeing gift store, you see everything from Legos to rockets to bags to suitcases, you name it. It's all a matter of marketing. And a matter of marketing is for the people who need to sell something. Uh, there is... Um, the answer to your question, what will happen with the new things that are there? Again, when you go through the airport uh, like SeaTac, the first thing that you see uh, um, up above is you see the Curtis airplane. Then you turn left a little bit and you see Voyager, the one that did the single flight around the world with uh, the Rutan design, Bert Rutan design. And those are phenomenal things. And uh, I had plenty of time at the airport, so I, for once, I started reading the museum quality presentations about symbols, about the, uh, the patch that two people flew around the world that was done one time, world record, and yet they had something that you and I call a patch. And it comes and it stems from the same drive uh, that 
in Russian uh, lore, in Russian culture, there is such a thing as a revolutionary art. They had this in poetry, they had this in paintings, they had this, and people who go, a team or anybody else who goes to Russia, they collect classic Russian posters, particularly space-related posters. I have a collection of Russian stamps, and each stamp is worthy of a framed uh, display. Uh, there will be always a need. Uh, there will be always someone who fancies these little things in my back, the barn store, you know. Um, we have uh, wings over Houston. Uh, we have all those things, you know, the Mac uh, or Le Bourget, there will be always uh, interest in a particular event or particular achievement or particular uh, challenge. And the interest will always be there. The only question is, who can fill the gap between humility, who am I to do that, and ambition, why not me? Okay. And finding a talent and, and lining up yourself, uh, I make this no excuse. I make this an honest, sincere, uh, to, to the extreme admission that when I looked at uh, Mark's patches and I said, I can do that, it was an ambition. And it was an ambition that also had to be harnessed back because I knew that if you go into that area, for a newcomer or a person who is interested in doing things like this, they should know that they might be rejected and rejection is not necessarily a pleasant thing one way or the other. Okay. Um, and even when you give in to someone else, it's not because they, um, uh, they got something uh, more meaningful. Uh, I always remind this to my, uh, to my, my, my son, I say, you know what Na what Napoleon said at Waterloo? He didn't say I lost. He didn't say they won. He just said, today they bested me. And I keep this uh, close to my heart. If someone bests you, it only means that you competed. It only means that you were not a failure because you were part of it. And... Uh, can I do the same thing as uh, Jackson Pollock? You know, I'm going to go buy 200 paints instead of eight and start splashing them on a canvas. Uh, anybody who went to Houston and you're welcome to come to Houston, I'll take you personally to Rosca Chapel. And let's see what you're going to say about a giant uh, canvas that's nothing but black. That much, you know, and yet uh, you and I and Mark and, and uh, I listen to you guys and, and, and I just upload to all of your sense of humility. Uh, it's just, a, it, it, uh, it's out of the, I mean, it's up in the sky, honestly, honestly, honestly. So for Quite anybody, who, <laughs> uh, uh, well, because you all, like, like Blake said, he never thought that he would do that. Um, uh, like Frank so, said to me, why not you? Okay, I said, who am I to do this? And he said, why not you? Why not? Um, uh, people who call you up in the last minute and say, listen, I have, I'm between a hard place and a rock. Uh, we changed the numbers. We changed the name. I had a name changed on Expedition Patch. And what that meant is that now I have to change the font because that name was that long, okay? And I yeah. said, do you, do you mind to drop half of it? You know, uh, no, I can't drop half of it because it comes from a royal, you know, royal breed. Um, so you, you, you have the difference between the Chow and Parazinski. Yeah. No, <laughs> right or or I, <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. got to reformat for, that whole border <laughs> for for all yeah. intents and purposes if you noticed i didn't uh, i reluctantly used only three names 
uh, and even then I didn't want to use, for example, Heidi's name, you know, remember Heidi? <laughs> uh, you know, so, so all bunch of names, all bunch of reasons, all bunch of things that will come into place. When you step on this ground, you have to be prepared to, to, it's a minefield. It's a minefield to discover your passion. It's a minefield to discover your discipline. Uh, you may have an inspirational moment and you work through the night. Uh, you may come to a point where, uh, uh, unfortunately and very sadly, I, um, I have not one, but literally three episodes where my work was hit from the left field. Uh, my Expedition 3 patch uh, was released at the same time uh, as 9-11 happened. Okay, so what do you think happened from space? The, the, my first intentions and my first attempts to make a patch animated, okay, I animated Expedition 3. And that episode of animated Expedition 3 never was shown because the next thing that happened is Frank is showing the smoke coming out of the World Trade Center. Okay. And that was a tragic thing when Columbia tragically happened. Uh, I mean, ended. Uh, I lost a dear friend uh, and uh, the patch that was a personal patch became uh, a peculiar um you know uh, uh, who's pushing it am i pushing it am i pushing it out uh where in fact the intent that elon had was that every school child was to uh to enjoy uh his patch you see what i'm saying uh, and if you notice, there are two waves, and when I, there are waves of stars, and I brought the design with real waves, as Elon parting the sea, and his wife looked at me and she said, she, he is not Moses, there will be no waves. I said, okay, there will be no waves, but there will be waves. So that's why I put the stars in there, and you can see that they are forming the, the waves. Okay. And at the same time, I said, I will try and help you justify those waves because those are waves of stars and not just any stars. There will be 54 stars for the uh, 54th year of uh, State of Israel, which incidentally, we just celebrated 72nd uh, year of Israel. So you can see how many years have gone since that particularly. So there will be a lot of emotional uh, moments when uh, an astronaut who is extremely kind and extremely generous comes to you and says, you know what? My first audience is my wife. If she likes it, everyone will like it. If she doesn't like it, it doesn't matter who likes it. So when Mark, creates, when Mark creates his art, I'm it sure that no, I'll say I'm, I'm sorry to sorry to cut you no, off, no, but we're no. actually almost ten minutes over the show time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? No, 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 no. That, yeah. That's why I said the final final line on it is that your art will always be a collector's art. Your art will always be needed because even fifty years after the original Sputnik flies, we now celebrate Yuri's Day, and every year I see new and newer designs, and if. If I walked into Boeing store and I see Gagarin in there, there will definitely be uh, a Team Ganyan and definitely will be Mark Pestana and sure as hell there will be Mike Dumasnil. Uh, so uh, that simple design, I don't know who did this, but Rosie is still with us. Look at that. And so, Morgan, you can do it. <laughs> well, I want to thank everybody for coming on the show tonight. Everybody has been, it's been an amazing guest uh, list tonight. Uh, so much insight. This is something that I don't know a whole lot about other than what I've talked to Tim about in the past. So I hope that all of our listeners got to get, uh, you know, really an insight on, 
on the the behind the scenes, what it takes to create these amazing pieces of work of art. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We will be back next Saturday. I have no idea what the topic's going to be about. I'm still working on guests, but I know it's going to be awesome, as it always is. And uh, please make sure to check out our Twitter. We're now doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday Spaces Chats with incredible uh, science communicators, uh, engineers, astronauts. And uh, we're going to have a special one tomorrow night. Uh, with Dr. Cyan Proctor, who was just selected for the Inspiration4 mission. Uh, so there will be more details on our social media tomorrow morning. So once again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining the show tonight. And we will see you all next week at 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Yeah, Mountain Daylight Time. That's what it is. So bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. And appreciate team, it. Again, team to you, my personal deep thanks with 